over the past few months, I haven't talked about it recently here on when I'm not podcasting, but I have talked about the uh, issues of systemic and institutional injustices. But of course, you might say it's racism. Well, we've been hearing about this for a while, obviously with the murders of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Richard Brooks and others, and how those stories have really polarized the discussion. But then what happened is, is that we're hearing about how Black Lives Matter, in some cases, people are saying that, you know, is it really representing black lives? And the truth is, the allies that are supporting Black Lives Matter, are they necessarily doing it for sanctimonious re reasons? Are they feeling like they're being bullied into doing this? Do they feel like there's a thing where if they're doing this now, if this is hopefully to placate and to capitulate to the masses as a marketing or advertising ploy to make sure that they're the consumers that they think will be uh they will be putting a big magnifying glass as to what they how they respond to Black Lives Matter and to this whole movement, how they're going to handle things. Well, we've already seen allies doing things that have been kind of stupid and have been short sighted. Let's just say it as it is. June 2nd, 2020, to show solidarity with protesters, many companies posted a black square on Instagram with the hashtag Blackout Tuesday. We saw the CEO, former CEO of Reddit, Alex Ohanian, Alexis Ohanian, excuse me, known uh, to house dreads, they say, and rife with hate speech, resigned from the company's board calling for a black candidate to replace him and said he would take his future gains from his Reddit stock to curb racial violence. Well, what they're talking about here in this World Economic Forum story is there are actions touching on two issues facing the media and entertainment industry. One is the absence of black representation and representation positions of power, and two, content that is hostile to people of African descent. So they go to the stories, but what was really important in the story to me is what all these major corporate entities have decided to do. The corporates that have no spine, or they're doing this because they think this is a good idea, because they think there was something wrong in the first place. I'm not sure if there was or not, but again, you know what's going to happen. We always get this kind of thing happening where when there are tensions kind of rise, a progressive movement like a Black Lives Matter is going to start making demands. And what are the latest list of demands they're going to ask for? So when they get the latest list of demands, whether they're good or not, we have people that are going to act like allies, you know, projecting their white privilege or their white fragility or white guilt in order to capitulate or placate. But are they getting any respect or any kind of, you know, reward or any kind of credit for what they're doing? No, absolutely not. We know that. But we also know, which people are not going to talk about, is that there are opportunists that are taking advantage of this. And that's what's going on here. It's opportunism, opportunistic things that are going on right now. And there's been a lot of outcry on both on many different areas about if this has been right or not. This group, which is a large advertising agency worldwide, global, they released data on the ethnic composition of its workforce in order to improve black representation among its highest ranks. So they show senior leaders make up 1.9% of their career, uh, of, the, of the employees they have. 4.6% are mid-level, 8% entry level, 5.4% career level. When it's mostly a predominantly white uh, white employee base. 81% are senior, 69% mid-level, 64.8% entry level, 69% career level. So this advertising PR company says they're going to do things to be intentional about cultivating careers of black talent, providing greater access for black talent by designing a talent pipeline that champions them, requires disrupting everyday buyers training for all employees, Investing 45 million euros on three years diversity, inclusion, and social justice. Launch a virtual apprenticeship for minority youth who typically do not have access or exposure to the industry. Among, and they have a lot of other things, a big long list. I'll talk about the, what I think about this, and I've said this before in a moment. In the consumer products area, Procter & Gamble, which is one of the biggest companies, they own so many different brands that you use every day in your household. <clears throat> the CEO, Chief Brand Officer Mark Pritchard warned media channels and networks, pl platforms, and programs that will pull ads pen if they do not accurately or respectfully portray black people. 
and the company launched a comprehensive review of its media buying partners. <laughs> the gaming industry has also responded. Electronic Arts, or EA, is contributing $1 million to organizations dedicated to the fight for racial justice in the U.S. and against discrimination around the world. Beginning with the Equal Justice Initiative, the NAACP Legal Defense and Educational Fund, and more partners to come, we are deepening our support of organizations working to stop systemic racial injustice, fight discrimination, and protect human rights in the U.S. and beyond. What you're going to ask yourself, too, is, you know, putting it to the NAACP, Black Lives Matter, and other organizations. Well, Black Lives Matter is a politically charged organization. If you don't know it, please look it up. Same thing for the NAACP. A political politically charged organization this is not the united way this is not you know the catholic church this is not you know some 501c3 organization that we see like the boys and girls club or you know things like that we're not seeing that i mean we're i mean where is the money going again these are contributions but they're not going to charities as you will maybe not necessarily And will all that money be available to anyone based on the color of being black? Is that really going to be put out there? Is that money going to be really put out for people to really get ahead? Or is it just going to an organization just to save face? Because most of these companies and most of these sectors are doing it to save face. Music. So the music group is launching a $100 million fund to support social justice and anti-racist initiatives around the world. Warner Music Group set up a $100 million fund to support charitable causes related to the music industry, social justice campaigns against violence and racism. Spotify UK, $10 million to organizations committed to fighting racial injustice. Publishing. So magazines, Condé Nast, U.S. Black Employee Resource Group, NOIR, they said, quote, as a company, we will be supporting Black Lives Matter, making corporate mon monetary donations to organizations, supporting the victims, protesters, and supporters in the latest wave of racial injustice. Point is, victims, protesters, supporters. Do we hear anything that's going to actually be contributed that is going to have a long-term lingering effect for poor, disadvantaged, in some cases, predominantly black communities? Do you hear any of that at all here, right? Racial injustice organizations, these are political organizations. I mean, if you're going to put the money somewhere, some of the organizations are talking about, okay, they're going to donate to racial justice and organizations. Some of them are going to be Black Lives Matter, which Black Lives Matter has made a lot of money from this. But are they truly an organization that is focused on systemic injustices, in institutional injustices? You gotta ask yourself the question. Is he really doing that? Anna Wintour, editor in chief of Vogue magazine, which is owned by Condé Nast, said, quote, I want to say that plainly that I know Vogue has not found enough ways to elevate and give space to black editors, writers, photographers, and designers, and other creators. We've made mistakes too. I take full responsibility for those mistakes. So people are apologizing. Apologizing. Now, are there going to be opportunities for some disadvantaged people or, or disadvantaged black people that they feel like they're victims or they feel like they can't get anywhere in life? Do they want to work at Vogue? Do they want to work with Publicis Group? Do they want to go work at other organizations? I mean, you know. And, and by the way, does the community itself really want to feel like they're victimized and they want to feel like that they need a helping hand, that they can't do things by themselves? Because I know a lot of good, hardworking working you know, people of different minorities, of which I am one. People that are work work hard, we don't need a handout. We'll make our way up there. And even if times are tough, we're in a bad situation, we're in a bad environment, we overcome and we find the American dream. That's the idea. And it's not a political kind of stance. It's just a matter of that people want to be able to do it themselves. And, you know, anything I ever got for free was never that good. That's just how it comes. I don't want the government help me out to do anything. You know, just look, you want my taxes? Here. I here's my tax money. Now go build bridges, go build air, nice airports. You know, take care of the infrastructure. Make sure the highways don't have potholes and shit like that. Okay? Take care of that kind of stuff. Really, take care of it. 
And that's what's more important to me. You know, public works, public utilities, garbage, post office, all that kind of stuff. Like, take care of that. Fund the things that matter to everyday people every day. Comes down to that. Social media has also pledged. As Mark Zuckerberg said, well, $10 million of racial justice organizations. Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey pledged $3 million to Colin Kaepernick's criminal justice organization. YouTube CEO Susan Wojcicki announced she'll create a multi-year $100 million fund dedicated to amplifying and developing the voices of black creators. So all these organizations I've talked about so far, they're throwing money at the problem. Some might be actually offering opportunities like Publicist Group to actually offer talented people that might not have the normal opportunity to change things up. Publicist Group actually has the right idea with it. I can't, I can't complain about that. If they want to make, you know, make it where... But the most important thing, I think, also is that, you know, diversity, equality, and inclusion. Those are the three targets. And I know that I've talked on my cannabis radio program, Blunt Business, we've talked about it. And on the network itself, we've talked about DEI. Now, DEI would be the solving solution for this problem, not Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter is a political tool. It's, it's an it's a instrument for political use. Are they really going to help out with social causes? When have you seen things that have been funded by Black Lives Matter? You know, let's say, uh, are they building, you know, community centers? Are they building housing? Are they doing things like Habitat for Humanity, right? Are they helping to go ahead and, you know, fund small businesses and help small businesses thrive and grow in the space? Are they doing any of that? Is any of them going to anything in communities, you know, that are hurt right now? You know, we have all these different places that, you know, they might have protesters that were peacefully protesting, but we know that a lot of cities have come away with damage. Minneapolis, we see Portland, we see Seattle, we see Los Angeles, we see other areas that there are lingering effects of the protests that have been taken over by opportunists. Is Black Lives Matter going out to go and help those organ- those communities with what's going on? Because they, in turn, are trying to help you know, further the cause. Well, they also need to do is they also need to be helping back out the communities that they, where the people live, right? I mean, you would think all these people congregate around those communities in downtowns where they were at so those people that were protesting there when they go back they're going to see a lot of places that are not there anymore or you have broken windows you got fires you got looting vandalism graffiti on the walls everywhere you know it's not the way it was left so think about that but sports right now more than anything else sports has come back completely politically charged all of it now, we already knew Hollywood was that way, but it's really amazing. And this is a story that's got to be, you know, really followed along with is that sports has come back to a point, but it has been so consumed with what's going on right now with systemic and institutional injustices. So in sports, the NFL apologized for not listening earlier to black players who protested against police shootings or unarmed black people by kneeling during the U.S. national anthem during games. And then the World Economic Forum says, are these statements of solidarity and donations enough? And here's what they say, quote, while many companies have begun to respond to systemic state racism by making donations, others have looked at their internal practices, just lack of advancement opportunities for black employees or perpetuating negative stereotypes in the content creation process. Moreover, the common thread of media and entertainment is that those in positions of power have disproportionate influence over society's attitudes, feelings, and behaviors through advertisements, film or video games so this is a thing where they're trying to say that there's there that what media and entertainment is being consumed by the general public needs to change to more reflect what they're seeing right here they're trying to say it's not systemic they're just trying to change the system altogether it's now being a complete change around where the idea of media entertainment needs to be prominently predominantly black so we need to see the idea is that it's turning it around where blacks are boy, it sounds like to me they want to make it where all black people are considered like you know they need to be up 
uplifted to a higher echelon. Like they should be the uh, bourgeoisie or whatever. You know, I mean, that's the idea is that anybody else that isn't black, it sounds like, even if you're a minority, that you're a permanent underclass. It's as if there's a punishment for people that, you know, if we're minorities, the, the minorities are going to be then put in the same underclass and changed out because for whatever reason, the black community needs to be pushed to the permanent, uh, the, the, the permanent prominent class. That they're supposed to be the upper class. They're supposed to be the elite class. I didn't know anybody was trying to become elite, but that's what it feels like it is to me. Is that really what it's supposed to be? I thought we wanted equality. Everybody at equal footing. But what sounds like right here in this story, and I'm just, I'm just pointing this out. I'm not making an opinion about it, but here's the thing. The common thread is positions in power had this disproportionate influence. So are they asking for an influence to be that it completely flips the script? Are we trying to change the entire look at it and change the pendulum to completely to the other side? Is that what we're doing? Or do we want diversity, equality, and exclusion? And inclusion, excuse me. But I want diversity, equality, and inclusion. I want everyone in the black community, Asian, Hispanic, whether it's Latino or Hispanic or Caribbean or, or North or North American, South American, or Latin American descent, Indian, you know, I want all different ethnicities, ethnicities, creeds, religions, cultures, all based on a meritocracy. I want full diversity, equality, and inclusion. So part of me for what I try to say here, I don't just want black people to succeed. I want everybody. I want Hispanics. I want Asians. I want all minorities to succeed at the level of everybody else. What's wrong with that? I want there to be room for that to happen. Is that really wrong? I don't know. Some people might say it is, but I'm just trying to put out the argument. I'm trying to put the discussion out there. Is it one way or not? Like that's what you're going to ask yourself. Because here's the other thing. There is a permanent elite class when it comes to many sectors. You know, music, sports, and music entertainment, we definitely have a level of, you know, people who were predominantly black when it comes to the NBA, in some cases the NFL, is a big thing. When it comes to music, we've always had a number of predominantly black stars that have been able to dominate music. It's pretty obvious. And there are a number of top box office movie stars, a lot of top television stars that are also very prominent in their space. And it doesn't make a difference to me. Now, is it completely still systemic and institutional when it comes to Hollywood, when it comes to sports, when it comes to entertainment? Sure. Yes. I don't agree. With, I don't disagree with that. But again, it doesn't have to do with color. It's status. It's what it's always been. They also say in journalism, the failure to properly cover black story stems not just from newsrooms and ability to attract or retain black people, but how black journalists are frequently questioned and reprimanded by their supervisors on their ability to be impartial on coverage of black issues. The story concludes donating the charitable causes is a start, but systemic change necessitates hiring black professionals. Okay, systemic change. In this story, they say you have to hire black professionals necessitates hiring only so they're saying black is that only black we can't say minorities because black is not the only minority out there we all know that so why is it only black professionals and roles and influence are positioning the perspectives of black readers viewers consumers at the center of content creation but we want do we want it to be where you know does it have to be just like that okay the media ecosystem begins to rebrand products of racist undertones, remove ads with racist undertones. But again, racism only because there's people that they, they say if it's offending black people, then that's what needs to be taken down. That's what needs to be scrubbed, clean. No possible point of it. Is the black community really that... Are, are they really that offend, offended by everything? Or is it just what's being allowed and what people can say about it because diversity 
equity and inclusion, I'm totally in support of. Again, you know, I mean, I, I practice what I preach. My employment, what I do, who I work with, it's all based on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Because it doesn't matter. It's merit. Because it doesn't matter who I work with. What matters with is that the person can perform. That's it. Somebody that fits in the environment, and the environment is creative. And creativity, by the way, that's most important because what I do is in a creative space. So I want people with different viewpoints, different opinions, different environments where they came from, different origins, different stories. I like that. So the idea of diversity, equity, and inclusion being put into our entertainment and our media, I'm totally agreeing with. Because I want variety. I want change. I want to know my world. Good. But not everything is just black and white. It's just not. And I'll leave it right there. We'll talk to you next time.